And I'll start with a chart that I assume is familiar to everybody. What's the red line? Oil consumption. Now, what's happened to oil consumption? This is U.S. oil consumption. It's going up. What's happening today is the price has gone up again. You can see our, our price period, we've tried to adjust this, uh, all kinds of ways you can pitch it, but, but in current dollars, you can see the oil price today is as high as it was in 1983 in constant dollars. What's happening to demand? Maybe we'd argue that the, the uh, economy is more dependent now than ever before on, on oil and transportation. We just don't have a lot of substitutes. So we're not, even though the price is rising, our system, our, our economic system of just-in-time inventory and, and Walmarts that need to have trucks right over it doesn't really allow us a lot of substitution. Now, supply is a problem. We've seen lots of supply problems over the last few years emerging. So where is this future supply going to come from? Well, you can see that there's, there's four or five different colored bands, but it's going to come from no one reserves is the first one. Enhanced oil recovery. Oil sands, the orange bar is... Uh, what's driving the Canadian economy, of course. That's unconventional, meaning oil sands in Alberta. And at the very top, we have something called un unknown potential, unfound oil. I don't know about you, but whenever I see something like that on a chart, you start to wonder and say, well, what does that mean? Does that just mean that, that we're going to make it up and find something wishful somewhere? Thinking. Wishful thinking. Now, the wishful thinking, thinking is what the guys at the second part um, of this chart showing. And uh, this is a group uh, started with a, with a physicist actually in Sweden, um, the Association for the Study of Peak Oil. They've got a whole bunch of people now on this bandwagon of saying, you know, we're living in a fantasy world. Now this chart is different. What it shows you in blue is the rate at which we find new oil every year. But, but uh, this physicist did a mathematical model of if you're wandering around the earth with a stick. So just imagine, imagine this, if you're a geologist, I know geologists don't do this, but if you imagine yourself being a geologist, if you just wander around the earth poking holes in the ground, how much oil would you find? Well, at the very beginning, it's likely, just like playing Battleship or one of these games, it's likely you're going to hit the big oil fields first. And you're going to find those oil fields. If you keep wandering around the world poking sticks in the ground, you'll start to find the smaller oil fields. Ultimately, you get to the point where we are now, the argument, where you can poke lots of holes in the ground and don't find much, and you're finding micro reservoirs of oil. But we found all the oil that there is to be found, and, and this curve that you can see, the blue curve, shows you that we found a lot of oil over the years, but we haven't been finding much lately. The peak here of finding was 1960. The red curve is interesting because the red curve is our consumption, what we actually consume every year. So the critical point here is 1990, where we found less than we actually pulled out of the ground. And ever since then, you can see the gap is widening. We're not finding new oil, and we're using more and more oil, so we're drawing on our reserves. So I think this is just a, a pretty classic economic picture. We know that we're going to start to see shortages in a situation where we're using more than is coming on stream. But in 2005 was the peak oil production around the world. And we've never produced more oil than we did in that month. So, so does this mean that that's the peak? And if you go into the data, there's all kinds of excuses and reasons and discussions over why that might happen. You know, is it disruption? I think, uh, um, Joanna, you gave some ideas on you know, we could have disruptions in, in uh, uh, the Middle East. You could have a problem with Venezuela. There are all these excuses for why things aren't online. But in fact, we have peaked production. And we might come back and you might increase it, but this gives you a little more belief that something might be up. Now, why is oil demand going up? It's transportation, it's simple as that. It's growth of transportation around the world. Transportation is the only thing that depends on oil. We're 100% dependent on oil, or 99.5% dependent on oil. We put more vehicles on the road around the world, we need more oil. It's as simple as that. Uh, this is another chart I stole from Matt. You don't need to read it. It basically says everywhere outside the developed world, oil demand is on fire. Why is that? Every economy outside the developed world has finally got it. They're finally recognizing how, how you develop your economy to lift people out of poverty. China is lifting a million people a month out of poverty. Talk about an incredible social change. How are they doing that? Well, part of it is that they're building transportation infrastructure, they're moving goods and services around, they're building buildings, which requires us to move material. So their transportation sectors are on fire. 
We're seeing more vehicles put on the road in China and India than ever before, and that, of course, needs oil. So this is why everywhere around the world, it's not just China and India, we're seeing rapid development. In fact, the highest growth of oil consumption is in the Middle East. If you look, and we can talk about that if you like, but they're using oil in their own domestic economies as you see things like uh, these incredible cities going up in the Middle East. Now, everyone talks about cars. We all you know, know fuss about fuel economy, and faster cars, and buying Priuses, which is great. All of that stuff is necessary. The fact is, though, that we're seeing more oil going into heavy-duty vehicles, commercial vehicles, trucks and, and buses, um, than we are in cars. This is the picture for the United States. Yellow and red is, is trucks. Green is passenger cars. So in the next 20 years, it says we're going to have twice as much fuel going into trucks than cars. What is a 10% improvement in passenger car fuel economy going to do for this picture? Nothing. Right? It's not, it's not going to be measurable. It's an essential step, but it's not going to change the picture on oil consumption. So here's some factoids, rough numbers. A barrel of oil is about 20 gallons of gasoline. You with me so far? The U.S. consumes almost half the world's gasoline. Our gasoline consumption in the U.S. is growing about 2% annually. 2% a year will get us to the point where we need 35 billion gallons of new gasoline. It's about 5 million barrels of oil, new barrels of oil. Let's assume that we can continue to produce at the rate we're producing. We still have to find another 5 million barrels a day, which, interestingly enough, is about all of the oil consumed in the U.S. 30 years ago. So we have all of these mixes of issues. We have an environmental issue, an urban pollution issue, we have a global climate change issue, we have an oil supply <coughs> issue, we have an energy competition issue, energy security issue, because of course oil comes from uh, places that aren't, aren't necessarily uh, the best place to be sending trillions of dollars of new wealth. So we're starting to see political commitment to change. This has taken us a long time. We're starting to see a move. The number that, that uh, the president announced a year ago was 20% alternative fuels. A challenge to get to 35 billion gallons a year just says that we're going to hold things flat. We're not going to eat into the consumption we have today. We're just going to hold it flat. Now, how are we going to do that? I've heard lots of things today about how great natural gas is. I can tell you that there is no mathematical model I've been able to find that says we can do it with natural gas or hydrogen alone. We're going to need everything we've got. We're going to need every source of biofuels. There's nothing wrong with, with biodiesel um, in terms of displacing oil. We're going to need ethanol sources to help us cut into gasoline. But we're, that's not enough either. There is no way that we're going to be able to get beyond, I think, 14, 15 billion gallons of those conventional liquid fuels. That's, that's a very challenging exercise and it's going to take a lot of investment. The result of that is we're seeing a rapid growth in the industry worldwide. And I'm just going to give you a couple of charts. All right, I don't need you to read the numbers, I just want you to look at the picture. But you look at the red line, this is the number of natural gas vehicles on the road in these countries. And the consistent pattern you'll see is that on the left side, which generally starts in the early 90s, it's zero. Somewhere around 2000, 2001, 2002, we get a liftoff. The biggest infrastructure project in the world for several years was the uh, Three Gorges Dam. I'm sure everybody's read about that. The second biggest project was the East-West Pipeline, which was this big green line. Now the biggest natural gas pipeline in the world. They're twinning it because when they started this eight years ago, they thought this would last them for 20 years. They discovered four years in that natural gas demand was, was going to double, so now they're twinning the pipeline. So earlier question, well, how much gas do we have in the world? Moving gas to transportation is, is, uh, is not going to have a big impact on gas supply. What's more interesting is can we displace the current uses? Right now, gas is being used primarily for power generation and home heating. And we'd argue that there's lots of better uses for gas than power generation and home heating. We've got lots of choices. We could use wind power. We could use tidal power. Nuclear plants, if you really want. China's building, I think, 35 nuclear plants. There's lots of ways we can move electrons around. We don't have a lot of choice on transportation fuel. So let's take this, this incredible resource of natural gas and use it to displace oil and transport. And uh, that'll buy us until something gets invented that uh, doesn't depend on, on uh, fossil fuels. 